Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. Today is the big day when we delve into the realm of object-oriented programming, often abbreviated as OOP. Before we start talking about the implementation of object-oriented programming in C Sharp, let's say why there is a need for objects in programming in general. You see, whenever you do something in real life, you are interacting with an object. If, for example, you want to sit down, your butt is interacting with a chair. And that chair has many properties. It has color, height, maximum supported weight, and much more. Now imagine how can we keep track of such properties. Well, we can certainly make a bunch of variables, but if we wanted to store information about two different chairs, we would have to create all of those variables for the second time. Let me tell you, we as programmers are lazy in a good way. Duplicating variables and keeping track of them makes me feel quite dizzy, to be honest. As you might have guessed, this is where object-oriented programming saves us from the headaches. It allows us to create kind of a blueprint of an object, which contains all the properties we want. In C Sharp, this blueprint is called a class. And we can then make objects themselves. And in C Sharp, an object is also called an instance of a class. And all of the objects of a certain type, like the chair from our example, have the same properties to which we can assign some values. So, now that we have the basic idea of object-oriented programming covered, let's dive into the implementation. As an example, we will be using a class called person, because it's easy to understand and it will also come in handy to have such a class later on in the series when we will learn about inheritance and a bunch of other awesome concepts. So if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button if you do not want to miss out. If you look at the code, you can see that there's already one class present. It's called program and it's been there since the first episode. This is because C Sharp, alongside with Java, is a totally object-oriented language and it literally cannot survive without classes. We could say that in C Sharp, everything is a class or is encompassed inside a class. There's just no other way. But let's ignore this already created class and let's create a new one called person. We're gonna create it above the class called program and we just wanna type class person. As we already know, a class can group a bunch of variables together. And if you want to sound cool when you explain what you just learned from ResoCoder, you should also know that variable inside a class is also called a data member or a field. Creating a field is really simple. It's no different from creating a classic variable. A person should have height, weight and also a hair color. So let's add them to this class. So double height double weight and string hair color. Now let's try to create or in other words instantiate a person in the main method. To make an instance of a class, otherwise known as object, we use the following syntax. Person, now the name of the variable, which is gonna be John in this case, and this is equal to new, much like when we were creating a race, and person, now two parentheses and a semicolon. Alright, so now we have a person, but we didn't assign any attributes to it. To do so, we want to type John, and now we want to access the fields inside the object, and we use a dot operator to do that. But wait a minute, there are no fields, but only some methods which we didn't even create. Well, this is because we didn't say that the height, weight and the hair color fields can be accessed outside of the person class. And since now we are inside a class called program, we cannot access them. You see, when we don't specify from where we can access a field, it's as if we wrote private before the data type, just like this. As the name implies, a private field is only accessible from inside the class. If we want to be able to access the field from other classes, we have to mark it as public. These private and public keywords are called access modifiers. According to the C-sharp naming conventions, a public field should use Pascal casing, which means that the first letter should be capital. So now let's change all of the fields to be public and with the correct naming conventions. 
Alright, now that we've made the fields public, we can assign some values to our person called John. We can do this by typing john.height and this is gonna be equal to 180 and we wanna do the same thing for all the other fields. And now we can print out for example the hair color. And to do so, we pass john.haircolor as an argument to the rightline method located on the console class. And it works! And I want to say that I am using the superior metric system over here, so the values are in centimeters and kilograms respectively. Anyway, to assign values to our fields, we wrote three lines of code. We can use a feature called an object initializer, which Visual Studio is even offering to us. If you look at these three dots under this new keyword, and when you press control dot or when you just click on this light bulb, here it writes that object initialization can be simplified. And when we click on this, it creates an object initializer for us. And the syntax of it is pretty straightforward. But even now, all we did is that we don't need to type the name John before each field. And we want to make it even easier for ourselves. Thankfully, there's a solution for that and it's called a constructor. In fact, we are already using an implicit constructor. See those parentheses after the new person? This is a call to a special kind of function called a constructor. But this implicit parameterless constructor, which by the way every class that you create contains, isn't saving us any work. We need to create one ourselves. We can do this by writing public person, now parentheses, as if we were creating a normal method, and we want to have three parameters, height, weight and hair color for each field. As you can see, a constructor must be named exactly like the class and it doesn't have any return type specified because the return type is obviously an object of the class in which this constructor is located. Also, as soon as we create our own constructor, the default implicit one disappears. That's why we have an error because we can no longer use a constructor without any parameters and the error is right here. Inside this constructor, we just simply want to assign the values of the parameters to the fields. And now inside the main method, we can delete all the field assignments and do everything inside the constructor. So we want to delete the object initializer and write all of the values inside this constructor. And let's also test out if everything worked correctly and this time we want to print out the weight. And yeah, everything is working just fine. Alrighty, this is it for this tutorial in which we covered the basics of classes in C Sharp. To learn even more, click on the link in the description which is gonna take you to resocoder.com where you can find a few questions and coding assignments. There are many many more exciting topics to come and it's gonna be a lot of fun because once you understand the fundamentals, learning becomes really rewarding as new possibilities open. So subscribe and ring the bells to stay up to date with my new content. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned a bunch of new things, give this video a like and also share it with other people. Leave a comment, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.